Hello, welcome back to Ben Sushi Live Learning. In this episode, I will be doing a breakdown of these um, animations. So this is all basically created using geometry nodes. It's really um, just kind of retouching uh, all the basics about geometry nodes. So it's basically just a bunch of monkey heads jumping around. But I kind of want to see them as um, kind of like an object animations, not a vertices. Uh, there are of course uh, instance geometry, but I'm really interested interested with uh, geometry nodes that's being able to act like a more like a modifier. Oh, like a, like a drivers. So I, here I have a bit of control with the animations. Like I can multiply the time, make it slower, faster, and with the Susan head over here, it's the instance of this guy, but I can easily replace that with a grease pencil or something like this. So this is just a, one of the setup. I can, I can show you the breakdown real quick, but I want to show you before I do that, I want to show you like, if we have like a, a single monkey head here and we apply a geometry nodes, you know that for a single objects, we can actually kind of drive and animate this, right? You, you can use like a sine wave to drive the, the motions. Um, you can, you can, for example, use something random, like random float value. If you plug in the seed there and the value, this is a single floating value. We need to combine it. Something like that will work. So tree value, and I'm hoping for different seed value. So we can actually, I think we can try this is math here and just give random value. So we have a different seed and plug this into the translate. So we can use this seed to animate Suzanne. Right, and I can just uh, use like a frame here. So we have this kind of random position of Suzanne head, and this is animating. However, it's animating as a modifier. So here you cannot see any value. So it's not like a drivers on top of an object. However, we can we can save these animations. So if I file export Alembic. Can export selected objects. It's gonna export the animations by default. So I can save this as anki anim export file import alembic. I have to show you this one because it's really quite interesting. So we have the animations on the this guy. This is a mesh sequence animations alembic it's still doesn't have like these animations over here however we can bake bake these animations based on the visual keying okay now you can see here with the graph editor that this monkey head is animating oh actually oh I was wrong. This one, as a single object, this guy is not really animating, which is uh, interesting, because as an instance, it is actually animating. So I have to show you this because it's really quite interesting. This guy, however, is animating. There are instance and geometry nodes is doing something clever behind it, so I can file export alembic. This is, uh, yeah, just export it as it is. Export selected objects. So if I create new Blender file, file, import Alembic. We should get animations. All right. Well, at least this guy is actually 
moving around and animating as an empty so you can actually bake this I remember well so anyway if we treat the objects as instance objects like point instance and we transform it and animate it it's gonna it's gonna be bakeable compared to the just transform okay so based on that idea I have this setup that I want to explain to you so it's basically a circle with random seed there's uh, also radius controlling the circle there's a time multiplier the time multiplier is basically so we have this Python of frame that's been multiplied with this value so I can control the speed so that's first and that's pretty easy and from the circle I have this transform I think this is actually to rotate to rotate itself um, and then I have this attribute fill you know, with the name I just call this attribute blah this is actually more like time 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 offset I think it's a good idea to always label it but I don't like to change the the actual nodes so normally I will frame the nodes join a new frame with something like this time with offset so I label it so this is time goes in time with offset and then it goes to the sign formula so it's a uh, time becoming sign formula however what's interesting here is that we are generating um, the value on the fly so it, we start with a single value however with this attribute fill and time with offset it's becoming multiple values or factorized values so we can use a sine wave and it's gonna it's plugged into the z of this xyz and then and then i plug this into attribute map range this guy is actually converting a sine value minus one to one into and map it into zero to four just in the z axis and currently you, you might notice the animation is funny it's not like the normal sine wave it's actually kind of flickering because I'm using step linear I can turn it back to the li normal linear okay step linear and there's a smooth step and there's a smoother step this makes the curve is more like a jumping jumping monkey you can actually use the clamping as well which is pretty interesting if you use clamp and here with minus one and one you can kind of change the value there it's gonna stick on the top for a bit because of the clamping okay so after we do that with a sine wave making the position here this is more for the spinning spinning motion so I should stick this I call it rotate but I'm actually using the original time and rotate the z-axis and pass it into the points for the instancing okay so the green color is all related to instancing so this is the instance of the object so we have Susan we have a uh, grease pencil and Suzanne here I could actually have the combination of the two if I use collections I wonder if I should try that or maybe use different objects for our experiment so move this into new collections and call it call actually instance I'm gonna hide this 
select this use collections and select instance so now we have a different animations the okay the donuts probably with this donuts it's better if it's a r y 90 degrees okay that's nicer so we just change the animations of, of this very very quickly we can make this 100 change the radius or maybe less is better 40 so it's dancing characters dancing around you can let's select select this object only file export alembic this time i'm gonna turn off the instancing turn on selected objects export the alembic once again file import alembic hopefully this time we can see that the animation is actually being exported okay so we have our real objects this is of course an alembic constraint object but you can see this is instead of mesh cache this is transform cache and transform cache is actually bakeable bake action and if you look at it uh, after this bake um, animations completed you can see with graph editor there's actually animations for each one of the objects this is all procedurally generated using geometry nodes and you can see the pattern it's quite nice and we can actually get rid of the transform cache so it's a uh, pretty interesting so if we could get back to our creations here you can see um, this is the whole setup right here so let me just summarize it's a single object with an with an empty geometry and okay we have this object that's pointing into this instance okay and it's basically the instance objects that's being transform so it's animated so this is the animations of instance <clears throat> rotating translating it's not scaling i can make it scaling and i have this align rotation to factor but it's all related to the instance and this is the spinning motion these guys is basically time that's driving the motions in in the z-axis so it's ups and down like a sine wave in the future i guess this is becoming can become a little bit more complicated but we might have like a noise etc but but if you are driving a lot of objects like this uh, you can use sine wave and functions etc however very likely you just gonna use something like a texture attribute sample textures and color ramp we, we've done that probably in the past but this one is requiring the UV in our case we don't really have UV but if you start with a uh, something like plane or grid it's already usually have a, a UV and you can use that UV value to uh, an image texture noise to drive the animations that's usually what's going on this is a little bit more low level uh, kind of thinking okay so hopefully that's easy to understand um, and useful so the idea is if you are using instance when you export it as LMB you will get the transform animations constraint and you can bake that as animations compared to simply just using transform this is more like mesh level uh, modifications all right so there you go that's a quick look at instancing and animating instance objects and kind of setting it setting it up so we can have this kind of animations kind of like the 
simple cloud system or just like character jumping around. Alright, so thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.